All right, well, when it comes to your finances, are you a spender or are you a saver? Mm. A new study says spenders are happier than savers. Okay, I thought we established that mm. if you're a spender, mm. you're good. But our guest says you can still find joy in saving money. So Todd Miller is a thrifty saver and founder of the website tightwatodd.com. <laughs> you achieved financial freedom at the age of 35. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, how are you guys doing today? Are great. I mean, maybe even better after we talk to you. So, <laughs> is it possible that you can save and be happy? I guess science is saying it is possible. Absolutely. Of course, you can save and be happy. Okay, so the key Actually, is pulling it off. Actually, savers tend to be. Exactly. Yeah. The, the plan is is being able to save money. So savers do actually tend to experience feelings of being more confident calm and optimistic compared to those that don't have savings. When you really stop and think about it, you know, every day people run into emergencies and have these emergency expenses. And it causes a lot of stress for people that don't have savings because they don't have any way to pay these bills. Whereas those that do have savings, you know, they have an emergency fund or in fact savings that they can fall back on in order to satisfy some of these unexpected bills that come their way so they don't get as stressed out about them. You know, in today's culture, it really comes down to being able to balance saving and spending. Of course, it's, it's important to spend money on the things that bring you joy in your life and add to your quality of life, but it shouldn't go so far as to come at the expense of your future. Unfortunately, all too often as a financial coach, I do run into situations, you know, where people are living paycheck to paycheck and are, are unable to save money every month or worse, they're going into debt. Um, further into debt as they have out of control spending. Mm -hmm. Either way, for the, for the sake of their long-term uh, financial health and future and happiness, you know, it is important to find ways to save money. All right, Todd, so let's talk about the steps that you have where you can save money, but you could still be happy. Exactly, yeah, so the first step is really Look, taking a look at your expenses and all of the places that you're spending money and starting to categorize those and, and grouping those things together so that you can have a better understanding of all the places that you're spending money and really the amounts that you're spending money on these categories as well. So once you have your list and your categories together, then you can start ranking them and you're really going to rank them in order of the amount of happiness that they bring you. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to start cutting expenses that really make you happy because then you're gonna be having all these feelings of deprivation and sacrifice, which is gonna make it a lot harder to stick to you know, budgeting and to saving and to putting money away every month. So instead of cutting the expenses that make you happy, you should really start with cutting the expenses that don't really make you happy or that you're indifferent about. So most often that could be things you know, like your insurance bill. Most people don't really care a whole lot about who they have their insurance with, just that they have their insurance. So that's a really easy opportunity to save a couple hundred dollars, you know, every couple months um, by just shopping around. So it's it's really sustainable if you're cutting the expenses that really don't, you know, detract from your quality of life and allow you to save for the long term. Yeah, sounds like you can get a little creative to help stretch that dollar a little further. Now, obviously, it is varying big time between how much money you make of how much you can save per month. But is there a percentage or something that you can give us where we can all get an idea of, of what we should hopefully be able to put back? Exactly right. Yeah, so everybody's financial situation is different and everyone has, you know, different goals. But I would say, you know, when you're first starting out, your goal should be to get to about a 10% savings rate, whether that's through, you know, uh, matching a 401k at work or, you know, allocating a certain amount of money to start paying down debt and bettering your financial position. Uh, but over time, you should work your way up to closer to a 20% kind of a savings rate where you're putting 20% of your money into, you know, investments and savings and building the emergency fund and working towards those financial goals. All right, Todd Miller of tightwadtodd.com. Thank you for coming <laughs> in and balancing us out. We really need it. It's <laughs> a fun name. We love that. Thanks for the smile.